Okay, folks, for today's video, I'm gonna be showing you what you need to know that most people don't know in order to fully recover from a narcissistically abusive relationship. There are a few dangers here. If you don't know this, you can stay stuck and never recover. You can actually become even more narcissistic. As most of you know, those of us who've been through narcissistic, the abusive relationship, narcissistic traits are inflamed, but I'll show you why this can make you more narcissistic. And you can actually get stuck in something called prolonged grief syndrome. Not a good place to be. Um, and essentially your growth as a human being will be uh, held back, it will be arrested, um, and it can go on for a number of years. So that's the danger, that's why you need to know this. A little caveat, uh, the material that I'm about to present to you is complex. I'm going to go through it quickly, and I'm gonna try and make it as uh, simple as I possibly can. So we're working today with a new model, and it's Sam Vaknin's model, and it's called the Dual Mothership Model. And what this posits is the idea that in a narcissistically abusive relationship between the narcissist and the, uh, let's say, target, there is something that is called co-idealization. So I'm gonna show you how this plays out, and then I'm gonna show you what the danger is and why this is so dangerous, and then I'm gonna teach you what to do about it. So what happens in the dual mothership model? The narcissist and the target go through what Sam calls co-idealization. It is not just that the narcissist idealize, idealizes the target, which you've already heard before, it's that that co-idealization becomes mutual. The ultimate purpose of why the narcissist is doing this is so that they can fuse and merge with the target as a mother And the ultimate purpose is to go from fusing and merging with the target, not as the target, not as an individual, not as a human being. This is why you don't feel seen. It's why you're not respected as your own person. You are simply instrumentalized to be the narcissist's mother. The co-idealization is there to allow fusing and merging as a child would do with the mother. And the ultimate purpose is to go through the co-idealization phase into the fusing and merging phase into individuation. Now, what needs to happen? From being idealized, you then to need to go through a process of being persecuted and being knocked off that perch. So if you're there as the mother, you're up on this pedestal and you're the mother, you're idealized in order to individuate the narcissist has to kick you off this perch and drop you because if you're if you remain idealized if you remain the perfect mother which is what the narcissist took you on as and idealized you as he or she cannot individuate from you so they have to persecute you they have to make you into a um, bad object so that they can ultimately reject you and that they can ultimately um, discard you. So you're aware of these things where you go through idealization and then you go all the way through to discard. Well, the purpose of discard is to knock you off the pedestal so that the narcissist can then uh, finally individuate. Okay, so this is very important to understand. If you're trying to make sense of the weird ups and downs, the push-pull of the relationship. I'm showing you this model that Sam has developed. I think it is the absolutely, I 100% agree that this is the correct model. It explains everything that happens inside of a narcissistically abusive relationship. It also describes the weird uh, change in tone that you will experience that comes from nowhere. It's never about you. You are an instrument, you're instrumentalized, you're there to function as the mother that can be pushed away from. The narcissist, uh, female or male, in childhood was not allowed to individuate from mother. So they're still uh, subsumed, they're still fused and merged with mother, but they're desperately trying to grow up, they're desperately trying to free themselves. 
this is not a, a, a morality lesson. I'm not saying therefore they get out of free, get out of jail free card, morally speaking. I don't believe that. But I'm explaining to you the mechanics of why this happens. Why was it so wonderful in the beginning? And then why did they spend months dragging me down? This was an unconscious impulse to move them towards individuation so that they could kick by kicking you off the pedestal through the discard phase. They spent an awful lot of time and an awful lot of energy engaging in devaluation, devaluation. So the poor uh, target is left in this weird state where they're like, well, why is this happening to me? Why am I being treated so well? And now why am I being treated so awfully? And the thing that damages your confidence is part of the machine-like nature of this process. You're trapped inside of this evil machine that's doing this to you unconsciously. All the good bits are in the idealization. The narcissist must idealize you so that they may fuse and merge with mummy. You are mother. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. It doesn't matter if your relationship is gay or straight. You are mother as the, as the narcissist's target. You're the person they've chosen to play this game. So they're fusing, emerging as mother. In order to do that, they must idealize you. The purpose of the fusing and merging is to become one with you so that they can individuate. Individuation is the word that we all need, whether you're a therapist, a coach, or you're a client for this, you must start talking about individuation. If you want to make sense of what's going on inside of narcissistically abusive relationships, previously I would have said the most important thing to understand is narcissistic supply. It isn't. That's actually quite uh, uh, cosmetic and surface level in terms of a driver. This is the real driver. They are trying to grow up. They're trying to become human. They're trying to be a person because they're not a person uh, when you meet them. So individuation is the idea and everything bad that happens in the relationship is part of the other side of the coin. So they must get close towards you, then they need to push you away. Everything bad that happens is part of uh, devaluation. So name your favorite uh, or least favorite, should, should I say, narcissistic abuse tactics. Or everything that we call narcissistic abuse is a part of the devaluation phase. So this is essentially what's going on. Now, why is it called the dual mothership? Why is it dual mothership model? I'll explain that to you in just a moment. I said to you in the beginning, there's some things to be uh, cautious of here. You will stay stuck, you will remain in prolonged grief syndrome, and you can actually become even more narcissistic. How? Inside of this process, if you don't accept that this is what's happening, if you resist that this is what's happening, and you say, no, no, in my case, there was something else that was going on, and I didn't let another person do anything like this to me, I didn't become their mother, I wasn't uh, idealized, I wasn't discarded in this way, none of this happened, what can start to happen is you become narcissistic in your defenses. It's classic psychotherapeutic denial. Your ego finds this objectionable, and so it just negates it and it simply pushes it away. You must remember that narcissistic personality disorder, this is Sam Vaknin's model. I'm going to tell you something that I, is more, more, personal, more personal to me, in my opinion, the essence of the narcissistic personality disorder is one big no. It's a rejection of reality. I don't like that reality. I can't accept that reality. I negate it. I say no. And I choose another reality that is a fantasy-based reality that comes from me, not from the outside. So when you're coming from, if you imagine uh, uh, this is a poorly drawn egg, that's the worst drawn egg ever. Sorry about that. Um, and then there's a person inside of the egg. All eggs matter, Rich. All eggs matter. Um, and you're in here. The ideas that are coming only from you that are self-referential, that are solipsistic, are essentially narcissistic. And what we're doing outside of the hard shell of the egg is that everything that is outside of us is kind of negated. So the essence of the narcissistic personality disorder becomes delusional. It is a, 
an infant in an adult's body trying to act out this ongoing um, malfunctional, maladaptive, it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, which is why the narcissist goes through elation, depletion, or, or happiness and sadness in more normal language, because sometimes they pull it off and sometimes they can't, but it's a big no. So be very careful, be very aware when you hear yourself or feel yourself just saying no to the whole thing. Why would that be considered uh, you becoming more narcissistic instead of it just being a narcissistic defense? Because with what the narcissist has done to you inside of this whole weird, few, they've fused and merged with you. They've pushed you into the role of mother, hyper-idealized mother. Well, you didn't ask for that. You then start to enjoy this because you're being idealized as the perfect mother. There's another element to it that we'll come to in a moment. And so you then become, if not addicted to this, at least conditioned to this, you, you're, you're gathering something from the, the significance and the drama and the emotional intensity that this person is showing you, that your hormonal system, your central nervous system, your perceptions register as love. You go, oh, this is passion. This is love. This is what true romantic love like in the movies is. No, what's happening is you're, you're experiencing the emotional intensity of an infant who's looking at you and saying, enter my reality, you enter my reality so I can leave. You walk in, I'm being sacrificed to the owl god Moloch right now and I wanna change you for me. It's a quid pro quo, this for that, in an effort to escape. It doesn't work, of course. They don't get better, they don't heal, but it's an unconscious effort. But you're the sacrificial lamb. You are the uh, scapegoat. You're the one to take on all the sins and all the crimes and then to die, which is where the uh, term scapegoating comes from. It was an actual practice where all the sins of the tribe would be put into a goat and the goat would either be ritually slaughtered or left in the wilderness to die of thirst and predators. That's scapegoating. That's what a scapegoat does. So you're the scapegoat, you're the sacrifice. Inside of that process, the narcissist entrains you for you to uh, fulfill this role. You're conditioned mentally, you're entrained. This is all Sam Backnin's model, Sam Backnin's theory. You're entrained to take on their traits. You're entrained to take on their world view. And so you, in order to be in a relationship with a narcissist, you are entrained to be a narcissist yourself or the relationship could not function. It doesn't mean you have MPD. It doesn't mean that you have MPD. What I'm trying to warn you of is if you don't accept this, that you're gonna stay stuck. You're gonna end up with prolonged grief syndrome and that can go on for months, years, and you, your life just goes into a state of arrested development and you can become, you could become quite narcissistic yourself because this, the fusing, the merging, the idealization, and even the devaluation is all a painful cult brainwashing, trauma bonding process that colonizes your mind. So your mind is now colonized by the narcissist. Your mind is infected with the narcissistic worldview. Undoing that, which is what we're gonna to come to in a moment, is quite a challenge. Hopefully you're with me so far. A bit weird, about to get a little bit weirder. Why is it called the dual mothership? Where's the duality? Where's the dyad? Dual mothership. <laughs> it's not only that uh, you have been recruited to play the mother of the narcissist, the narcissist is going to play your mother as well. So part of this co-idealization uh, process, oh, it looks like breasts, how Freudian. Uh, the co-idealization uh, co process is a covert contract where I will be your mother and you will be my mother as well. So in a certain sense, you're, you're now in a symbiotic relationship. You're offering hyper-idealized mother's milk and receiving hyper-idealized mother's milk. So you're both offering each other a kind of narcissistic supply. That's why it's the dual mothership model. You now understand that the purpose of the co-idealization isn't to keep you here, it's to fuse and merge with you to then push away from you to cause the individuation. Why is this a problem in terms of healing? This is a problem in terms of healing for several reasons. So 
let's start with the simpler reason and then we'll go into the more complex reason and then I'll start to point, give you some pointers as to what to do. So if you break up with a narcissist, you think, oh, I've broken up with them, so that's it, that's over. Except you haven't realized that you're in the dual mothership relationship and they have colonized your mind. So when you break up with them, this is Sam's, Sam Vaknin's theory, his hypothesis, when you act after the relationship, you act as the narcissist. So when you go to therapy, you go to therapy as the narcissist. When you do your courses and your healing process, you do them narcissistically. This is a problem. Number two, when you leave them, you may be overwhelmed by feelings, weird feelings of guilt. And uh, you may be quite anxious about them and their safety and where they are and what they're doing. Why? Because when you leave them, you have to abandon them as a mother abandoning a child. So you must understand and deal with these weird emotions. I've had it. So I've been a girl, and it's happened to me twice, a girlfriend, I've been their mother and I'm abandoning her as a mother abandons a child and I get anxious about them after the breakup. Doesn't matter how abusive or horrible they were to me, I'll be like, where are they? Are they okay? Can they cope in the world without mother to take care of them? So you're a mother abandoning a child, extremely difficult emotions. You can become, uh, you can develop tremendous, even if you've never had it before in your life, abandonment anxiety, which is quite painful and difficult to live with. Where's this coming from? You are also being abandoned by them and you are being abandoned as a child by their mother. So you are abandoned. You are also abandoned. That's where that's coming from. And the other element of all of this that is very difficult to overcome is that in order for this to keep going and to keep functioning, because it's quite a strange relationship from this perspective, I'm sure you would agree, is um, Sam Vaknin took a concept from a psychoanalyst uh, called Sander, who came up, we published a paper about this in 1989, and he called it the shared fantasy. Sander's idea was that all relationships have a, a shared fantasy in order to function. It's a normal functioning thing in order to deal with grief and disappointments and hopes and dreams. The relationship between two adult human beings requires a shared fantasy. Sam took that idea and applied it to narcissistically abusive relationships. And he said, okay, so when you break up, these are just some of the issues you'll face. When you break up with your narcissistic abuser, your mind is still colonized. You're gonna be overwhelmed by feelings of guilt and anxiety because you're a mother abandoning a child. You're gonna feel like tremendous abandonment anxiety even though you've never felt that before in your life because you experience it yourself as a child being abandoned by the mother. And if the shared fantasy doesn't die and you don't kill the shared fantasy, by killing it, we have to, I'll get into the solutions in a moment, but we have to deconstruct it your narcissistically abusive shared fantasy. So what does this mean? It means that in order for the two of you, so imagine you're in a matrix pod and they're in a matrix pod and you're feeding each other supply. You're feeding each other fuel as you exist in the pod. It's a virtual reality that they've invited you into, but on some level, unconsciously, presumably you've consented to, you're still in the pod. But in the virtual reality, that you're being fed in the pod, you think you woke up. It's nightmarish. I mean, it's like horror movies and sci-fi movies in order to, to understand what's going on here. So you go, oh, you're in your pod, you're in the pink goo with no eyebrows and no hair, like that, in, like in the Matrix. And you go, oh, I've escaped the Matrix. And you're in the pod going, oh, I'm free. I got out the pod. This is amazing. All the while, you're still in the pod, still colonized, shared fantasy, not dead. In order to overcome narcissistically abusive relationships, you must understand the dual mothership model. If you're a coach and you're coaching people to overcome narcissistically abusive relationships, you must understand the dual mothership model for your client's sake. These are some of the primary things that are gonna block your client's progress. These are some of the primary things that are gonna block your progress. You'd be like, uh, I had a, a, she's not a client, she's a, a friend of mine, yesterday saying the same thing I've heard over a hundred clients saying in the last nine years. I already did the work. I already went to therapy. Why is this still happening? Because this isn't over and this isn't over and you haven't accepted this and this. This is gonna suck. 
All of this sucks. All of this sucks. But these feelings are really unpleasant. They make daily life very difficult to deal with. This keeps you stuck in a delusion. So you're, you're colonized. So you're, you're in a narcissistic fantasy. And this, if this is not deconstructed, means you've never actually exited the relationship. What's he talking about? I left my husband in Brazil five years ago. He's telling me I'm still in the relationship with, with my husband. Yes. If you didn't do this work, if you didn't overcome this, that's why you're still watching uh, uh, YouTube videos about narcissistic abuse because it, it isn't over. But he's moved on. He got another wife. He got, he's got kids, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. This is still real for you. You're still in the pod. I have a course. It's called Unplugged from the Matrix of Narcissistic Abuse. It uses Sam Vaknin's model um, to try and give you practical tools for overcoming. There are other issues that you'll face. These are some of the more obvious ones, the more difficult ones that I've shown you here. How to overcome the fact that your mind is colonized. How to deal with the guilt and anxiety of a mother feeling like you're a mother abandoning a child. This is one of the big things that pulls people back in. People will say I was pulled back in because the sex was really good. Even I said that. Even I said that in my last narcissistic abusive relationship. Why do it? Somebody said, why do you keep going back? The sex is good. Nonsense. It's because I couldn't stand abandoning her. I couldn't deal with the, the guilt. I literally couldn't cope with my own anxiety and guilt about abandoning her as a mother abandoning a child. Uh, you yourself are going to experience abandonment anxiety. You'll probably become uh, more hypervigilant, maybe even become more jealous, maybe even find yourself becoming more controlling. These are, that's their abandonment anxiety, by the way. That this is proof of colonization. It's their abandonment anxiety. These are what uh, Sam calls emotional artifacts. Some of the emotions you think you're feeling for your narcissistically abusive partner aren't even real. I'm so in love with them, or they're so sexy, or they're so handsome, or they're so powerful, or they're so this or that, and I feel this about them. It's all part of the shared fantasy. And that's actually the colonized part of your brain. That's how the narcissist thinks of themselves. But in order to get into this, you enter their reality and they enter yours. You have fused and merged. Your only way out is what they were trying to do. So your healing lies in the injury. What they were trying to do was individuate. They will fail. You can't individuate. This, this is a malfunctional way of trying to individuate as a human being. It's never worked in the history of... Uh, of human consciousness, you must individuate. If you want out of this, you have to understand the mechanics of what you're dealing with. You have to go through all of this. The old you, we're going to talk slightly religious terminology, the old you dies. The old you is not recuperable. The old you is infected. You have to be in a sort of semi-religious way, become born again. You must re-individuate in order to get out of the pod. It is not an easy process, but it's not impossible. The course we have out now, uh, as I say, it's called Unplug from the Matrix of Narcissistic Abuse. It has a community. We have moderators there who've been through this process themselves, who understand this process inside out, who can help you if you have any questions. It's not an easy course. You must be committed to exiting a narcissistically abusive relationship, and it is months of work. Don't, do not get the course and go, oh, I know, I'll jump to the end. I'll jump to the good bits at the end. When you open that course and you see what's required of you in the modules, there's a reason why I give you a timeline. There's a written timeline within the course. It is months. You must be patient. You must slow down, be humble, be self-forgiving, be patient, go through the process. And really, we're talking about a three to four month long process here. If you're willing to commit that length of time to your own, uh, individuation to your own recovery from a narcissistically abusive relationship, I would say the prognosis is very good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and for your attention, and I look forward to speaking to you again next time. Cheers.